In this chapter, we're going to address some of the common misconceptions about evolution. And we've already talked about one of these, in this the idea that Darwin was the first one to propose evolution, but by now we talked multiple times about how Darwin was not the first one to propose evolution, rather he was the one who proposed a mechanism for how evolution happens. But it was very clear, even before Darwin's time, that organisms evolved. And this was clear because of the fossil record and also because of observations where we can see that by selecting certain organisms in a population artificially, we could change their traits and their characteristics. Another common misconception is that evolution is the survival of the fittest. Now this is to say that the strong and the healthy will be the ones who survive, or those that survive the longest, and that the, the point of evolution is actually not about survival. So it's not about survival and it's not about being fit. And uh, this also comes from another misconception and is that the word the use of the word fitness in evolution has a different meaning than that of common language. So in common language we say someone is fit if they go to the gym and they're strong and they're healthy. But in evolutionary terms, fitness is the ability to pass on your genes. So it is how able are you to reproduce and produce offspring that are capable of also reproducing. So it's not about survival, evolution is rather about reproduction. So it's about getting your genes in the next generation. So how likely are you to get your genes passed on to the next generation and then that generation um, passing on their genes to the next one and so on and so on. And this idea of evolution comes from a couple of observations. So the first is the observation that populations remain stable. So if you look at a population like this, rabbits, their numbers stay pretty constant through time, generation after generation. But if you look at how many babies those rabbits are producing, they're producing a lot more offspring than will actually be in the population if you look a few months later. So a lot of those offspring will not survive. So organisms produce more offspring than will possibly survive. And the reason why not everybody survives is because resources are limited. So we cannot maintain an exponential growth of the population size when we are in a world of limited resources. So not all there will be resources for everybody, so not everyone will survive, and they, not all of them will survive enough for reprodu for, to reproduce. And those who do not survive don't get to pass their genes as they don't reproduce, don't get to pass their genes to the next generation. So those who have the genes that make it best suited for that particular environment and get most of the resources available so that they can reproduce, their genes will be the ones that will be more likely represented in the next generation. So when we look at a population, you will see variation within that population and those individuals that have the traits that make them better suited for that environment and better suited to get the resources in order to reproduce, only if that results in greater reproduction, then their offspring will inherit those traits and their offspring will be just as, as successful as they be, as they, their parents were. So um, those who have the best genes it's not just that they will be more likely to survive, but they will be more likely to reproduce and pass on their genes to the next generation so that over time, the future generations will have a greater proportion of those genes from their ancestors that had the best set of genes. Another misconception is that we used to think that, evo that we evolved from other animals and that we've somehow morphed into other things. So it's, to, it's the same as to say that your father morphed into you and your grandfather morphed into your father. This is not how evolution happened. We did not, it's not a fish that morphed into an amphibian and that amphibian morphed into a reptile and then that, that's not how evolution happened. Instead, the way evolution happens is just the same way as your family tree. So you and your siblings, you have your parents as your ancestors, so you did evolve from them because you inherited some of the traits from your mother and some of the traits from your father. And if you look back in your family tree, you will have your grandparents, 
and there will be the ancestors not just of you and your siblings but also of your aunts and uncles and your cousins so the same thing happens with evolution so here we are and if you go back in time so if we keep going back in this family tree eventually we will find a common ancestor of us and other mammals so people tend to say well if we evolved from chimps how come their chimps are still alive but chimps did not morph into humans but if you look back in time far enough you will find an organism that was the common ancestor of chimps and humans so just like great grandparents go back many generations prior and you will find the common ancestor of humans and chimps and if we keep going back even farther in time we'll find a common ancestor between all mammals and amphibians and reptiles and if we keep going back in time until at some point we'll find the ancestor of all living organisms so think of this as building your family tree where if you go back in time you find your grandparents great grandparents and if you keep going back generations and generations ago we'll find someone that looks like a primitive human and you keep going back and you'll find an ancestor that looks more like a primitive hominid eventually we'll find an ancestor that looks like a more like a chimp or a primitive ape and we keep going back in time we'll find our primitive monkey ancestry primitive mammal ancestor and so on until we'll find the common ancestor of us and all living organisms another misconception is that people think that evolution is random and how come if it's random you produce something so sophisticated but the truth is evolution is not random what is random are the mutations so mutations do generate at random and mutations could improve an organism or could damage it and most likely most mutations are detrimental but still there is those few mutations that provide an advantage and that advantage is within a context so let's say if you have all these mutations random mutations gave rise to all these variation of dogs so this is by random but which of these mutations just happen to be better suited for a particular environment so if you're going to live in cold weather then some of these mutations with where you have long fur will be more suited for that particular environment and if you live in a cold uh, in a warm place then you probably want shorter hair and um and maybe the ability to be very agile will also help in a particular environment so the mutations are random but which mutations will be passed on to the next generation is not random at all and it's something that is completely dependent on the environment that you're in so in one environment some mutations will be favorable but in a, the, those same mutations in another environment probably won't be helpful so it's like saying this dog probably will have a hard time surviving in the desert but it will be very well suited for a place with snow abundant Another important point is that we keep, we think that evolution is always uh resulting in better in better uh organisms and this is not true because evolution doesn't have a goal in mind or natural selection rather doesn't have a goal in mind so it's not to say that some organism is better evolved than another one rather some organisms have the suit of genes the set of genes that are better for one environment while other organisms have set of genes that are better for a different environment and this can change as the environment changes so this is the example of this uh spotted moth where if they're white spots they will be better suited in an environment that is has clean air and most of the trees have lichen and are white so they can camouflage if the environment changes and now you have pollution and the trees are now dark now the dark moths are better suited for that environment but this doesn't mean that one moth is more evolved than the other instead it means in one environment one set of traits is better than in another environment